This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. When you sign up with the link in the description, you'll also get access to Nebula, the streaming video platform that HAI is a part of. Here at Half is Interesting, our viewers always seem hungry for more North Korea content, kind of like how the people of North Korea are always hungry. And so, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to the Ruyung Hotel, an enormous glass pyramid located in Pyongyang that looks like the evil lair of a supervillain named Dr. Triangle. At 1,082 feet or 330 meters, it's the 63rd tallest building in the world. But who cares about something being 63rd place? I mean, at that point, it might as well be in 12,954th place. What's interesting about the Ruyung Hotel is that it's the single tallest unoccupied building in the world. That's right, the number of people in the Ruyung Hotel is the same as the number of good jokes in this video. Construction on the Ruyung Hotel began in 1987, but its story began a year earlier in 1986 when the Weston Stamford Hotel was completed in Singapore, becoming the world's tallest hotel. Now, you might think to yourself, why do the North Koreans care what happens in Singapore? After all, North Korea is here, Singapore is here. The only things between them are the East China Sea and the South China Sea. Two super uncontroversial things. But you see, the West in Stanford was built by the Sangyong Group, which is a South Korean company, and if there's one thing that North Korea hates more than mediocre Seth Rogen movies, it's their neighbor to the South. North Korea was determined to prove that they were better than South Korea, and so they decided to respect human rights, open up their economy, and reduce their nuclear ar- <laughs> I'm just kidding. They decided to build a giant glass nightmare hotel. When completed, North Korea's Ruyung Hotel was to be the tallest hotel in the world, and for the first five years of construction, it looked like they might actually pull it off. But then, in 1992, everything ground to a halt because the North Koreans ran out of money. Well, more accurately, the USSR, who was giving a ton of aid to North Korea, ran out of money, and even more accurately, the USSR didn't so much as run out of money as they did politically collapse due to a combination of democratization, foreign pressure, and the type of economic policy that included funding a 330 meter tall pyramid in a country that can't even afford Pringles. In 1992, when construction halted on the Ruyung Hotel, it looked like this a 105 story concrete husk that was about as useful as a Greek treasury bond. While the hotel had reached its intended height, it had no windows, no fixings, no interior, none of the little shampoo bottles that people seal at checkout. In other words, the hotel was completely unusable. This was particularly troublesome because the North Koreans had spent about $750 million building it, which was 2% of the nation's entire GDP. For context, 2% of the US GDP would be $387 billion, which is about as much money as Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Mark Zuckerberg have combined, or it's how much money the bottom 50% of Americans have combined, which is fun. For the next 16 years, the Ruyung Young Hotel stayed unfinished, during which time it became a subject of enormous embarrassment for North Korea, alongside other North Korean embarrassments like failed nuclear tests, defecting citizens, and Kim Jong-un's haircut. In fact, the Ruyung Young Hotel was considered so embarrassing that the North Korean government would airbrush it out of official photos of the Pyongyang skyline. It was like using Facetune, but instead of hiding pimples, they were hiding a $750 million concrete slab. Eventually though, in 2008, construction resumed with the intention of opening the hotel in 2012, at the 100 year anniversary of the birth of Kim Il-sung, who was both the first leader of North Korea and the world's greatest intellectual, musician, and basketball player, at least according to the North Korean government. In 2011, the hotel's exterior was finally completed, turning the Ruyung Hotel from a giant useless husk of a structure to a shiny giant useless husk of a structure. Since then, various opening dates have been set and cancelled, mainly because while the hotel may look finished from the outside, on the inside it looks like this, more like a course in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 than a hotel. Today though, while the hotel remains closed, it does finally have some purpose. In 2018, an LED display was fitted to one side of the hotel, and now it shows animations and even scenes from North Korean films, because after all, movies help you forget about your problems. Problems like that your government spent all its money building a pointless giant hotel movie screen so that they could show up a South Korean hotel from 1986. By the way, you know what else happened in 1986? The Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Now, I could tell you more about that event and how the exclusion zone is faring today, or you could just watch the great documentary Nature Fights Back in Chernobyl, which is available right now on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the streaming platform with thousands of top quality documentaries from people like Jane Goodall, Chris Hadfield, David Attenborough, and Stephen Hawking, plus a ton more, and it's only $20 a year for a subscription. Not $20 a month, 
$20 for the whole year. Plus, when you sign up for an annual subscription to CuriosityStream at curiositystream.com slash HAI, you'll also get access to Nebula, the streaming platform made by myself and a bunch of your favorite YouTube creators, which is filled with ad-free versions of our videos, plus a bunch of awesome original content like Grand Test Auto, a car review show by the guys behind Real Life Lore and Second Thought, or The World's Most Useful Airport, the documentary I made. You can get that bundle deal at curiositystream.com slash HAI.